Hey guys, so I am in my bedroom, as you can see, and I have this shell of a green wall behind me and I have been threatening for a while to actually clean this and I haven't gotten around to it. So today I hope to do that and I am going to take you through it. It's probably gonna be a little bit more meditative. I am going to stop and talk about it here and there and let you know what I'm doing with it. But basically every year I clean this bad boy out and it is quite a production because it fits somewhere between 60 and 80 plants depending on how many plants you wanna squash in there. And I have to remove all those. I end up trimming them. And after I trim and remove them, I kind of get out the gunk from the containers because the plants, if I could show you, are in these like felted pockets that have been sewn up and they have soil in them. And so sometimes that soil kind of goes into the uh, gutters and it just gets a little brown and mucky. Here, I'll show you what's in here. I can remove one of these. Have these little hydroponic floaters and you can see that they have a little felt strip. You can see that's a little dirty. It has a little felt strip on top and some of those are getting pretty worn. You know, this has been on my wall for Gosh, I can't even remember when I did my first build out. Maybe seven years ago, maybe a little longer. Anyway, I have a whole how to do this on my channel already, but I have some new felt strips. You could see this, you could get this at a fabric shop. And um, I'm gonna probably replace some of that felt that I just showed you, which will be great because this water, the water in the base, because it is subirrigated, so the water comes in from the bottom. And then if I have this felt wick over the top of that little hydroponic floaty thing, then the water comes up onto the felt, hits the felt packet here, and sucks up the water by capillary action and then waters these guys from the base up. So that's a little bit of how um, that kind of works as far as that goes. But like I said, I'm not going to be speaking very much because I'm gonna be very concentrated on actually just getting this done, cleaning it out, and putting some plants back in place. I got a few new ones that I'm going to put in here and uh, a little bit more of a color palette of red and green just to switch it up. And that's partially what I like about this. This is like a really DIY project, but what I really like about it is that you can move plants and give your space a whole new look because they are in those like felted packets or pockets or however you wanna call them. Um, so I'm just gonna get started, all right? So what I'm gonna do is not even, you know, wash these. Uh, I'm just gonna knock some of the dry dirt out. I stopped watering the green wall a few weeks ago and um, in order to be able to pull these out without uh, them being soaked with water. And then I'm just gonna measure this out, eyeball it, and then cut a little strip and put that felt strip right on top. So you can see I have that new felt strip right here. Ta-da! It's cool, right? I'm just gonna tuck it under along the edges. I just had a little bit of this felt material, so I could already see that it's not going to go a very long way. So that I won't have enough of it. So as plants get shaded out and everything, uh, you're gonna have to take them out or exchange them. You can see that sometimes like the roots grow out. If I could show you that. Sometimes the roots grow out of the felted pockets and then attaches itself to this. And that means the plant has, is searching for more water or is getting too big for its britches and will need to be removed. Okay, 
just stuff up here. So you may be wondering what I'm doing in there. Well, there's a leak in this second one. So I'm trying some of this flex tape. I don't know if it'll work. It kind of feels a little bit like uh, pool lining. <laughs> so, but it has like this really thick glue and you just kind of pull it back like a Band-Aid and you just place it on. So I'm hoping that is actually going to seal it a little bit better. I have some silicone, but it's a little on the dry side, so I'm gonna try this one instead. I'm up for trying something new. You know, I'm seven years old, it was an experiment, this green wall. Would I do it differently, knowing what I know now? Absolutely. But has this provided just beautiful background and scenery to wake up to? Absolutely. It has done just that. Sorry, I don't have a second camera. My camera person, Sonder, is not here, so I'm not gonna really be able to see what I'm doing in here. Well, once I fill this with water, I could tell you whether this flex tape actually works or not. I have no idea if it's going to work, but fingers crossed, hoping that it does. It's kind of really easy to use, as long as there's like no dirt, which I cleaned out up there. I don't think it's, uh, I think it's maybe pretty promising. Okay, let's see if we can. Geez, I put the ladder right on a philodendron leaf. Sorry about that, Philo. Let me get this out of the way. Okay, the next thing I'm gonna do is I have a couple of these Syndapsis, yeah, I had to double check I have that up here. Some Syndapsis Pictus in this green wall and I'm just sanitizing my shears. And they're a little long, so I'm gonna go through each stem that's kind of hanging down and seeing if I could clip any. Like this one, this one's a great example. I don't know if you could see. It's pretty craggy, so I'm just gonna remove that. Get up here and see. What I have going on. Yeah, like I said, this one I've had here for, I don't know, since, I, since I've had it. It was a lot bushier <laughs> back in the day. This philodendron too, I do have a philodendron in here. This philodendron is also from the uh, original time I put this in here. Oh, it's all complicated. Now I could definitely cut some of these right back. And if you cut these right back to the base, they'll start to bush out again. I like to leave them a little long. It just takes time for them to, to grow back. Okay. So I think I'm gonna be ready to actually put some plants back in here. And It'll be nice to actually give a little bit of breathing room. So oftentimes I'd have the plants just kind of like packed into the gutters, but it often doesn't serve the plants like very well, especially if I'm not gonna be here to be able to clip them back. And um, although they won't be doing much growing, it's the winter, so I don't think they're gonna be doing much growing, but let's just start putting plants back in and I'll prune them as I go. And I'll also give them a good visual. If they're dusty, I'll dust some of the leaves off. Um, the first one is going to be this nice jungle cactus. And since this likes a little bit more sunlight than the others, I'm gonna put it closer up to the, uh, the grow lights.
What I'm gonna try to do, as far as my strategy goes, is I have some of these hanging ones and I have some hanging ones outside in that room. And I think what I'll do is probably put those in first, considering that it will shade out everything else below it. And then that way it'll give me a better view of like where I could put the other plants. So I basically, just to let you know, I basically have plants here in this room and I have plants out there because there's just like not enough walking space if I had them all in this room. Okay, this is going to be a new one for me in this green wall. I'm gonna try a succulent and largely because I wanna experiment because if I'm gonna go away upstate for a long while, can succulents actually do well here? Well, we'll see. Also, this was the one that would get dry. The second one was one that gets dry. I know I could always put him up on a little higher pedestal so he doesn't get a lot of water. Put him a little bit closer to here. Yeah, so you see the string of fish hooks kind of hangs down and it's going to shade anything else that's under it. So anything that's under it would preferably like to be in shade or I skip it and don't put a plant in that area. We'll see. Looks cool. So if you have a green wall in your house, um, the best advice I could give you is just experiment with what plants may go well where. Um, sometimes you don't get it right. Sometimes you do. So I like to kind of move things around and experiment. I know that some of my philodendrons that I've had for years grow super well over in this corner and I just don't usually touch them. I'll probably put them right back into the same place. Uh, a couple of my pothos this year, the Epipretum aureums, actually did get some mealybugs. So I had to remove some of those. And I ended up just discarding them because it's actually too much for me right now to be able to handle um, a bug infestation. So I'm going to, um, especially now that I'm kind of like traveling a little bit more. So that is just, you know, you have to play it by ear on how you want to deal with those problems at you, that specific time of your, your life. So, okay, I'm going to do this one up a little bit further. You can see that my aglaonema get nice and caney that when they're growing in here. So I am going to leave it that way. These are eventually gonna get way too big for this green wall, but the, the foliage looks nice still, but I just have to appreciate that the growth structure is not always, it looks like as if it was like brand new straight out of the nursery. But I love this color and I love the fact that this wall is gonna be a little bit more on the green and red side. little ZZ plant. I actually tried this in the green wall a few years ago and it does quite well, surprisingly. I'm actually gonna try to fit it in this one because this one is the one that often leaks and I'm not sure if that uh, flex tape is gonna work or not, but I think it will, but let's give this a shot. Might need something bushier going up rather than this, because then you could see the gutters. I don't want to see the gutters, so let's just put this one away. I'll try my Ardizia right here, actually. 
This is a really easy to care for plant. This is called Ardizia or coral berry. And I have a few of these and they really do keep these berries for quite some time. So um, I'm gonna try this in my green wall. It does get pretty weepy if you don't water it, but um, I've never tried this in my green wall. So it's gonna be a little bit of an experiment. Newer one for me. Let's just try it up like this. Might wake up with one morning with all the, the berries <laughs> on the ground. We'll try it. You can see these Procris repens are really dry, but they're, they're fairly resilient. I had to really dry out my plants so I could actually get to cleaning this out. Um, but a little bit of water will go a long way with these guys. I'm just gonna fill this up a little bit because the soil is pretty much non-existent. So I'll be back. You can see that the Syndapsis pictus is also uh, pretty dry because the leaves are starting to curl inwards. But again, these are pretty resilient plants so they can handle a little bit of dryness. That's a little bit too long. Let's do this here. Really love this bromeliad, but once it flowers, it pretty much starts to die and then we'll send off a little offset. So, and I love how this looks. Might have to get another one of those. It looks almost like a splash of paint, like somebody just kind of tossed paint at the wall. Very gorgeous. I might have to pick up another one of those. I love this kind of red green look. I don't know how long it's going to last, but would be nice to maintain it for a little bit. All right, I'm getting down to the end of my plant picks. This Procris repens looks a little less dry and I'm going to fill up the felted pot with a little bit more soil. What do you guys think? It's coming together, right? <laughs> I still have a number of holes, but um, I have a couple more plants, so. They're not that big though. This one's just a little cutting. I could probably sneak it up in here. I really love the color of this bromeliad coming through. That's very, very nice. I don't know if I should just leave that one or maybe have a couple or maybe two or three and then kind of bring a little bit more of that, that red throughout. I would get like red anthuriums, but anthuriums tend to not do extremely well here. If I do, it's just gonna be like a seasonal thing and I go once in and then, and then out maybe in for a couple weeks and then out after that. Dracaenas do exceptionally well, and I really love kind of the, the spiky foliage. Um, they really give that kind of like pom-pom, much in the same way that this, this bromeliad is. Like I said, the aglionema tend to get a little caney, and they'll start to come out and maybe kind of drag themselves down. And um, if you have all hanging plants, I have, you know, it gets this kind of feeling that it's just you know, kind of long hair, just all kind of like hanging down. I kind of like some that are a little bit more close cropped together with some of the hanging ones. So, and these Ardizia, they look great now. I don't know whether they're going to stay looking great, but around the holiday time, they're fairly cheap to kind of pick up and, you know, put in the wall. So I might, I might try those for a little bit and see how they do. I have a few different types of Ardizia just sitting around my house. And um, I was away for about, two and a half weeks and they do get a little droopy so I have to be mindful of that. But otherwise, I think it's actually coming together because I want to turn my music back on again pretty soon. I actually had to put the window shades down because the light that was coming in was so bright, it was bleaching everything out. Okay, 
think this one could go right here. Okay, well, I think that looks pretty good. I put this off for quite some time, but it's like big projects are like that. Sometimes you just like, I have to find or allocate a day for them. But I really love how this turned out. I love those splashes of red. I am not sure how long those Ardizia or the coral berries are going to last in this wall. That's gonna be a little bit of an experiment. The string of fish hooks as well, or string of bananas it's often called. Um, who knows if that's going to turn out all right. I am going to turn on the water for this beast and water the plants because I had to dry it out first and all the plants are a little thirsty. So I'm gonna turn that on and we'll take a little closer look at this as well. Some up close and personal of my green wall. All right guys. Set timer for three and a half minutes. So I just set the timer for this uh, to three minutes and 30 seconds. And it's because it takes about four minutes to fill up this whole thing with water. And, um, and then it takes me like 30 seconds to actually run over there and turn it off. So this will all fill up. So basically the water comes in from my sink. It's attached to my sink in the kitchen. It comes through this little cord up here. Let me show you. If you see that little brown cord up in the corner, that's where the water comes in. And then it works its way down into each of these gutters until it fills up to a certain level and then continues to work its way down. But let's just let the water run and uh, see what happens next. 